Gasho to you all. Let's look at Koku again. I suppose if you read Chobogenzo, you are familiar with Dogen's view about time and time and space. In a very famous chapter of Shobogenzo, Dogen's writes the following Uji. At the time the mountains were climbed and the rivers crossed, you were present. Time is not separate from you, and as you are present, time doesn't go away. As time is not marked by coming and going, the moment you climb the mountains is a time being right now. If time keeps coming and going, you are the time being right now. This is the meaning of the time being. Does this time being not swallow up the moment when you climb the mountains and the moment when you reside in the Jewel Palace and Vermilion Tower? Does it not spit them out? The interesting point about this passage, full of uh, contradictions and paradoxes, Dogen plays with them to challenge our dualistic way of looking at reality and seeing reality. The interesting thing is that there is no collusion here. We didn't have on one hand space and time on the other. Time and space were not at one point magically joined, sewn together. It is seamless. And there's a good reason why it's seamless. It's because space and time are seen as one. What Dogen really means is that this being time arises as it is as broad and big and large as the reality in which it arises. The very origin, the very beginning, that <laughs> beginning is not the word, of all arising and of course manifestations cannot be extracted, removed from this reality. On one hand we've got a dualistic mind that chops reality, that actually cuts time from space, time from being, you from me, world from out there, blue from red, black from white. And we need that mind to operate in reality, in social reality, in day-to-day -day reality. It doesn't contradict the fact that in origin itself, that is to say moment to moment, being time, space, are one. So all the happenings 
the coming and the going, the dwelling or the traveling, the crossing or the climbing? Would it be palaces or mountains? All of this is just the manifestation of the broad body of Koku. You see, the great purpose of Dogen in Shobogenzo is to, to translate sitting into words. Shobogenzo could be seen as the sutra of sitting Zen, of Zazen. A song of praise done from many angles. Here he will pick up the bows, there the kissa, there the moon. Here he will look at Gyoji, practice, daily practice of the ancestors. Another chapter he will look at how to wash your face, clean your teeth. But we would be fooled if we see all these chapters as separate units. Again, I like the idea of a jewel. Because you have all these microsurfaces. Nevertheless, one light and it shines through and shines out. So Koku, the Shakta Koku, is particularly important because it points at this aspect of our practice where we return to the source. The point of Koku is to stop looking at Koku somewhere else. To stop the going, to stop the shopping, to stop, to stop the searching. To grasp your nose tight. That's the reality at hand. It's what is offered to you now. You get to do something with this, this body, this room, this space, this family, this job. Go. Not Chinese hermit trip, no special retreats in idealistic spots and mountains. No intellectual practice. Just what is given to you. What does Shikantaza manifest? What does Shikan just doing za and touch it ta za manifest? What does it manifest? It reveals what has always been there, space as space, you as you. So to return home, to meet and see the original face, is actually nothing but sitting in all this and sitting all this with you. Now I hope you have a, a wonderful time. I'm going to now go on a well-deserved holiday and uh, wish to be you with you
and you too, anyway. <laughs> wish to be you and with you, and you, me and with me, all along. Take care.